back to get so emotional. In today's video, I'm sharing with you editing tips that the top YouTube creators use to hook you into their story. All right, let's jump on in. The most used trick to entice your viewer to keep on watching more is what I like to call a tease. And by tease, I mean withholding information or showing an emotional moment that makes people want to watch more. The first way to tease is by blurring important information that the viewer wants to know. Let's watch an example by Danny Gonzalez. This is me standing in front of what's widely considered to be the most haunted hotel in the US, the Stanley Hotel. So just in those seven seconds, I'm interested what is in this haunted house because he used that blurring effect and it's really easy to do. Just apply a mosaic effect to your clip, then customize the size of the blocks. You can keyframe the size too to add some cool motion. Pretty cool. Another way to not reveal information is show what people in the video are looking at, have their reaction, but not show what they're looking at as a tease for something later in the episode. Let's take a look at Shane's example. Now, this is a video somebody sent me of mushrooms making music. What? <laughs> I know, I know. What did you just say? Let's all watch this together. <laughs> Shit. So you have this buildup where he zooms in on the people's reactions with that kind of like shrilling thriller soundtrack. And instead of revealing it, it just ends with Shane <laughs> laughing and they don't actually see it, making you, the viewer, more interested to keep watching. It's actually very easy to do. You can just record a couple takes of somebody. What? So it could just be like, you know, zooming in, adding some music and a sound effect, and you got your tease. Another example is showing an emotional moment at the beginning that happens later. Hot Ones has a great example. Obviously, this is a comedic moment. He's not actually crying here, but what they do is they add this kind of cinematic boom in the beginning, and they also tinted his face to be more red. It is so glad you had me on your show. <laughs> this is such an honor to be here. So, how do we do this to adjust the color? One cheat way of doing this is actually taking a screenshot of the color here and then saving it to your drive. I can import that screenshot into my timeline and you can see I have myself here pretending to cry and click in here. So what we can do is we can go to Elementary Color and we can actually go to Color Wheels and Match and go to Comparison View. And we actually want Culkin to be our reference image. So I'm going to scrub through and this is our reference. It's a great still of him. And then we can move the current playhead to myself. And what we can do is leave face detection on and apply match. And this is gonna take the red from this scene and apply it to my scene. Of course, it's gonna look a little bit different because we have two different clips here, but you can see it just brought the mid-tones up into the reds and my highlights into the reds. And of course, we can do a little bit more work from here so we can turn off comparison mode and we can go here and we can Go to creative and if we want we can add a little bit more tint to make it a little bit more spicy if we want and we can increase the saturation slightly all depends on what you're going for and one last thing i like to do after creative is to add a little slight vignette a little bit of black around the edges and enable the cinematic subwoof effect for dramatic effect and here we go to have you here and i just i didn't expect to get so emotional but that's it. So one of the best ways to have success on YouTube is to build a personal relationship with your audience. And when it comes to video editing, music can play a key role in establishing that connection and driving your story forward. And our sponsor for today's video is Musicbed, which is perfect because it'll help me show you how music plays this role. So here I have an example from Sam Colder, and in his films, the music that he uses almost triggers like an empathetic response in the viewer. And what I mean by that is that it helps you feel the way that he feels. So let me play this back and listen to the music. That day was my first time actually taking the mouthpiece out of my mouth at that depth and leave my safety diver. It's hard for me to describe the feeling. So you can see that he even says, 
It's hard, hard to, to describe, describe this feeling. feeling. He even stopped his voiceover at that moment and the music rose up and you know the movements were perfectly echoed and underscored by this kind of uplifting out of this world music track which he sourced from music but if you could imagine that scene without that music track it wouldn't be the same right so the music basically connected his feelings as a creator to you as the viewer. Another way that you can use music to elevate your storytelling is by perfectly choreographing your edit to the music. This is why successful YouTube editors often will find the music track first before they refine their edit down to the final edit. So here's an example from fellow YouTube editor and friend Hayden Hillier-Smith in Logan Paul's 99 Originals. Let's listen to the music. I'm so pleased with how this project has been received and I am so proud that this is just the first installation and I cannot wait to continue doing more originals. But those 99 days were life-changing for me. Beyond transformative, I got to live some of the coolest experiences of my life, meet some of the most Uplifting. epic people ever, and document it and capture it all on camera. So sit back, relax, get some popcorn and enjoy because these are some of those stories. Nice. So you can hear that kind of piano ballad track. It's just an uplifting music track that underscores how proud and excited he is of this. And then at the very end, after he says, sit back and relax, enjoy the popcorn, it ends on that one piano note perfectly and then it cuts to black. It makes us kind of hungry for more for what is to come. So let's say you want to end your music track perfectly like the way Hayden did in this edit, but the music track is too long, but you want to keep that natural ending. In Premiere Pro, you can actually use what is called the remix tool to stretch out your music track to make it longer or shrink it in. So that way the natural ending will end exactly where your edit is. So it's a really useful tool. Also, another thing that Hayden did was he increased the music slightly for impact. Let me show you when. I got to live some of the coolest experiences of my life, meet some of the most epic so people ever, up. and document it and capture it all on camera. So sit back, relax. So see how it went up there and then it went down a bit? So what you can do is you can actually use the pen tool on the volume line inside of Premiere Pro. And you can also do this in other software to just increase the volume slightly for impact and then lower it back down. Of course, you can use other tools like auto ducking, which I've talked about before, that'll automatically lower your track when dialogue is spoken so that way it's not too loud because the leveling of the sound is important. You don't want it to have the reverse effect to detract your viewer to go away from your video because it can be distracting. So Musicbed is the resource that I use as a video editor to find music that for one, will help connect to the audience and two, help drive the story forward. And it works because the music is so high quality that it makes it so easy to choreograph to my edit and build a better connection with you. So what I've done is I've put together a playlist of all of my favorite emotional cinematic music, which you can check out just down below in my description box. But of course you can always browse by genre or mood to find the track that you're looking for. You can sign up for a free Musicbed account and you can use my code PremierGal at checkout to get one month free when you sign up for an annual subscription. Another way that you can hook your viewers is through the presentation. And by presentation, I mean the uniqueness of your aesthetic. So let's face it, we live in a world with short attention spans, but the way that we edit and the way that we design it in a stimulating way can help hook your viewer. Your attention, please. Here's an example. Here's a video by Dan Mace. In this episode, I asked Logan Paul what seemed to be one of the most difficult questions mm, he's ever mm. had to answer. What a hard question, Dan. So for one, he uses that withholding of information. Remember the first tip that I gave to tease the viewer, but also he uses that interesting slideshow effect to bring us in. His presentation, his aesthetic help hook you in. And I actually have a video on how to do the slideshow effects. So if you want to learn how to do it, you can click right up here. Another example of this is Johnny Harris. He uses a montage of quick cuts and historical footage to bring the viewer into his topics. Healthy things that are in. Mankind's most nearly perfect food. Good, fresh, healthy milk. The year is 19. It's a great way to introduce the viewer to his topics. In this case, milk. 
No, no cool intro, no fancy music. I just want to explain. So here he actually is calling attention to the fact that he has these cool intros, right? So in all these examples, it's just quick rapid motion. Here it's seven seconds. Before it was a little bit longer, like around 12 seconds or so. And he uses sound effects and the historical footage to just bring you into the topic. And it's really addicting and really effective. Let me pull this into Premiere Pro. So if you right click on the whole video in my timeline and go to scene edit detection and apply a cut at each detected cut point, you will get, after you click analyze, this result. So it'll show you all of the cuts inside of Johnny's edit here. And you can see in the beginning that the cuts are tighter. He did over like 930 cuts in this whole video but he still holds on some clips here for about eight seconds if he's explaining something or it's like a document and you need to read it. So the quicker in the beginning, the better in this case, because it helps bring the viewer in. Another aesthetic example is in Beast Philanthropy. Let's watch. Just by clicking play on this video, you've already helped pay for someone to get a prosthetic limb. That is insane. Imagine. So notice how he hit and then it had that cool stop motion animation with the beast colors. Keep watching, you'll see it more. We've been living in a world where 80% of amputees are denied the care they need to live a fully functional life. This is a saddening reality faced by those living in developing and war stricken countries. So we flew into the heart of Cambodia in Southeast Asia, where Darren met with Tom Sass, who is one of the 40,000 amputees that live there. Just by introducing this, what is almost a documentary film here, is using these colors, stop motion animation. This is something that Dan Mace is known for. And Dan Mace was recruited by Mr. Beast to start producing, filming, and editing these videos for this YouTube channel. I think that this aesthetic helps bring you in and helps connect the viewer to the brand. It's just a brilliant move. And Dan Mace actually, you know, does a lot of this by hand where he'll cut out the different elements and he does like stop motion animation to create these effects. So it does take time, but it really makes a difference. And this last video here brings me to the last way you can hook your viewer. And that is through sound effects. Let's watch this back and let's count how many sounds that you hear. ...faced by those living in developing and war stricken countries. So we flew into the heart of Cambodia in Southeast Asia, where Darren met with Tom Sass, who is one of the 40,000 amputees that live there. It's this reality that has brought Exceed Worldwide in Cambodia to life. Despite doing everything they can to reduce these numbers, unforeseeable challenges have emerged. So you can see that all of these sounds were added in post-production and a lot of them are non-diegetic, meaning they weren't recorded at the time that you're seeing it in the film. They were either recorded after or from a stock site and added inside of the edit. So to really sell this to you, here's an amazing example of how sound effects can make you think something's happening when it's not. Supposed to be like helicopter. <laughs> So they weren't actually flying yet and they just used sound effects and music to make it feel like you're actually flying. And that's what half of editing is, is to fake it, to make it feel real right through the sound. Now I've produced a ton of tutorials on how to edit sound and sound effects, which you can check out. And I produced a free 20 minute course on how to level your sound. So there is no shortage of ways for you to learn from the channel. So next time that you're editing your video, think about these hooks. What are ways that I can tease the viewer to make them excited about the edit? What are some ways that I can use music to connect with my viewer? What are some aesthetics I can use that will make it more interesting? And what sound effects can I add to make it feel more powerful? If you'd like to learn five common mistakes that creators make, you can click right over here and you can click over here to check out my new toolkit plugin for Premiere Pro. As always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. I just get so emotional. Are you okay? Dude, I'm doing a bit. I know.